Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Not welcome back to the basement, we are in the car, but we will be headed to the basement shortly. We are on our way to go pick up the Strasburg snowplow from the TCA Museum, or the Toy Train Museum, TCA headquarters in Strasburg, PA. So these have been delivered. Mr. Muffin put out some content that his had arrived. He had a nickel plate one that he was posting on his website and, and out on his newsletter and on the OGR forum and so on. And so people have been asking, where's the Strasbourg one? And I've been asking the same question. Well, about a week or two ago, we heard that they had arrived at Atlas. And then basically what has to happen is the TCA then has to mail a final check to Atlas before Atlas then sends the truck out to the museum to deliver the pallet of snowplows. So that takes a bit of time and then mix in a holiday in there as well. They just arrived, I believe yesterday. And so I called my contact over there and I'm going to run over and grab mine to save some shipping money for everybody and show all of you. So really excited to check this thing out. Now I know before we even get started, a lot of people have been saying, you know, why did you only do a hundred of these? Well, here's the deal. You never know how popular something's going to be. And there's always a minimum quantity that you have to produce. So sometimes that changes based on what you're making. If you're making like a, a steam locomotive, like a vision line steam locomotive, Mr. Muffin did his class A's. He did 50 of them. That might've been the minimum quantity for that. It used to be 20 or 25. When I had my Strasburg 972 steam engine, I was a one of 25 that was done. Those minimum quantities continue to increase, but regardless, you don't wanna be left with inventory. Now, when the TCA or Metka or anybody does a custom run of something like rolling stock, they have to front the bill for all of those. So if you have 100 units that cost $100 a piece, you can do the math on how much of that check's gonna cost that they have to they have to write and send out without knowing if they're sold, right? So the TCA ordered 100 and then put them out there for pre-order. It just so happens that this item sold like hotcakes and sold out. So th that's a benefit of the TCA. Now they're not fronting that money, but there's many times if you go on their website and onto the TCA store, you'll see that there's still rolling stock available for sale that's in inventory. That's stuff that they fronted the bill for and they're out that money until that stuff sells. So they don't really wanna get into that type of situation with, with these. So we did a hundred of them. They sold really quickly, which was great. Now, here's the thing to keep in mind. There were two options when Stu and I were talking and setting the the, the deco work for the snow plows was do we do the current paint scheme where Strasburg is straight across or do we do the older paint scheme where Strasburg is curved? We chose to go with the current paint scheme, but that means there's room for another snow plow down the road. Now, Atlas isn't gonna re-release the snow plows next month, but in time, they will probably re-catalog the snow plows. And when they do, we, are thinking maybe we'll do another run and possibly do the older paint scheme where the Strasburg is curved. So what are your thoughts on, on that? And obviously when, when that time comes, we would we would promote it and things like that again, but maybe we do the old one or if there's a lot of demand for the current paint scheme of people that didn't get it th during this run, maybe we would do that again. So that's a little bit of, of back history there of why we can only do so many, so many things. And obviously if you, I had a lot of people try to buy the snow plow and they couldn't. Well, you have to be a TCA member to get into certain parts of the TCA store. So if you're not a TCA member, that's why you probably couldn't purchase the snow plow directly from the TCA. I'm sure you'll be able to find some second hand. Not sure what their prices will be. Uh, so th th just a, a little snippet there. You know, if you want to be able to see everything in the TCA store, you have to be a member of the TCA. So they have some membership options that you can you can join. All right, so let's go. Let's get to the TCA. We'll get some footage in there of the big pallet of snow plows and get it home and hopefully. Six eleven. This 
just got redone. We have some before and after photos we'll have to look at of this. So the train museum's closed. They're kind of closed this time of the year because they do all sorts of maintenance work. We covered that a little bit in a video I did last year, but we're gonna find our way inside legally because it looks like there's a crate of stuff right there. They know. Mouth talk, who knows? No, you can. They know. They know. We can be funny with this. You can absolutely. And yes. Like, you sure? Yes. I'm pretty positive Stu's the only one that knows, knows what this is. Yeah. Stu called and you. Awesome. Sweet. What's up, hey everybody, welcome back to the basement. Welcome back to the layout. Today, it's finally here. The custom run that I was fortunate enough to have a hand in helping to promote and bring to fruition with the help of Stu Rankin from the TCA. It's the Russell Snowplow Strasburg 66 TCA. Now, the pallets there, I got a call from one of the office workers there that the pallet had arrived. They are scrambling in that office right now. It, it's kind of a huge work session season for the TCA museum. It's closed. They revamp all sorts of stuff in that museum. Right now, everything's getting painted. So I was fortunate enough to be able to get in there and grab mine. They will ship all the other ones soon, but this came out just absolutely fantastic. The colors are spot on, as you would expect from anything that Atlas does. And it's just a really neat, unique piece. And it's gonna look really great with all the other Strasburg equipment that we have in the collection. So some add-on detail parts here. We've got some clear plastic uh, or frosted inserted windows and then some lights and things like that. And there's some other features of this as well. So let's get a little bit closer on this snowplow and check it out. All right. So the snowplow itself has two trucks. Each truck has a pickup roller on it. Okay, if we look at the underside of the car here, got some lights there so you can see. We've got some brake detailing and so on. Trucks have each have a pickup roller. Now this front coupler, as you can see, is just screwed on and there's just this little plastic, you know, piece there that kind of provides some tension to allow it to snap back into place. So taking a screw, you can, or a screwdriver, we can unscrew that and pop that coupler off. Now, there, because that plastic is so thin, we don't have a mounting brackets for a KD coupler, which I'm mildly disappointed about because it would have been nice to have a scale coupler in that spot. But they do give you is a piece that we can actually block that off. So I, I showed that earlier when we were unboxing this. So I will probably end up doing so that like, at some point. So we'll, we'll adjust that. But if we look here, we've got some add-on detailing with the steps and handrails. These doors do not open, they are molded in. We've got some detailing along the top of the car as well. If we tilt it down, you'll have some handrails. We've got a horn there, smokestack, and then we've got a brake wheel here. Okay, some antennas it looks like, um, handrails. If we look at the back, again, a molded in door here. They don't open. And same on the other side. Now, these flanges here do open up. So if we turn the car over, you can. So what you can do is you can pop it open, and then you'll see there's a little little metal tab in there. Keep pulling, that kind of pops out right along that hole there, and then that'll stay out further. So you can kind of see how much that will widen that snow plow. You gotta push snow off and away from the tracks. Then I'll push that back in. Just take your thumb, push that in, pop back in place. That simple. We've got some molded in detailing on the car, some rivets and hinges and things like that. Those are all molded in. Some great lettering there. Now, the actual snowplow at Strasburg is wood. So there is no molded in wood here like we'd see in the wood-sided passenger coaches or wood-sided reefers because the, the tooling that Atlas has has this be more, I guess, steel-sided. So, you know, it is what it is. It's not completely perfectly prototypical. Same thing with the windows. These windows are square. I believe Strasburg's are circular porthole windows, but this is as close as we're gonna get, and this thing looks really, really cool and really mean as it's coming down the tracks at you. So we're gonna move it around the layout today with 8618, which 
is one of our Lionel Strasberg motive power units. So let's go ahead and get it on the layout, fire it up, and send it around and see what it looks like. This is the dispatcher. Start her up. Stand by to pull. Over. Copy that. Starting up the engine. Out. screw back in there so we don't lose it. Yeah, this bag. Goodness gracious. You wanna play a game, buddy? Yeah. All right. So here's this piece, and this just, should just snap into place. Just like that. Not bad. That was literally 30 seconds to do, so easy change. Okay, bud.